don't use Automapper. Seriously, just don't. It's not only me who's saying this, even Jimmy Bogart, the Automapper creator, says this here, here, and even here. But why would you ask? Well, there are a lot of reasons why we shouldn't use Automapper, but I am sure that you don't want to be that developer desperately looking for performance bottlenecks in an application just after the release, right? Because that's exactly what could happen if you use Automapper. And guess which of these benchmarks runs with Automapper? I guess you already know that. But wonder what is so fast in comparison? Well, stay with me and I will show you. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel for this brand new video. Before we get into the performance stuff on Automapper and the problems that it might cause and what better alternatives we could have, let's take a brief look into a very typical looking Automapper configuration like this one. Now here we have a product and we have a product DTO and we want to map from the product to the product DTO. And we specify here explicitly that for the destination name, we want to map from the product name, for the description, we want to map from product description, for the price, well, we want to map from the price, but we also want to add a certain calculation. Now, even though this code looks very, very familiar and typical, it is wrong in so many ways. First off, Automapper, as the name implies, is supposed to work automatically. So it should be used when you can actually map automatically from one property to the other without specifying explicit for member calls. And Automapper indeed supports this because Automapper should be possible or should be able to map the product name to the name, the product description to the description without these four member calls. So these four member calls are redundant in this case. And then there is the next problem with this code, which is this third four member call in which we, well, want to map from the price, but we also specify a short calculation because in the product, we have this price, which is a price without VAT, and we have a VAT percentage. However, in the product detail, we have actually only the price. So when we want to map from one to the other, what we do is, hey, of course, we can do this in the map from method. So let's do the calculation here. But does this smell like business logic? Because it is, and it should be a total no-go. And unfortunately, this is something that we see very often when we look into Automapper profiles, that business logic kind of like is part or, well, is shown or is defined in the Automapper profiles, which shouldn't be there. So this should be a total no-go. Cool. Now that we know, okay, we have some problems in the use or in the way that we use Automapper usually, and I will also want to talk about performance issues that we might have with Automapper. So we need to compare it to something. So let's start also to look into some alternatives to Automapper. And by the way, I will not take into consideration for this video, other third party libraries. So I will just look into things that we can implement just right off the box, just taking advantage of, well, our programming skills and the features that we have in the C -sharp programming language. So the first thing that we could do is kind of like we can specify our mappings directly in our classes. So let's move over to the product class and see how we could implement that. The way that we can do this is just come to our product class and simply specify here a method that would return a product DTO and let's call this to product DTO. And by the way, this is an instance method. So we would kind of like need the instance for that and we will return for from the instance from the product instance, we will return a product DTO. And that could be something like that. And as you can see here, what we do here, we say name is equal product name, description for DTO is product description. And we do the calculation here, which is not in Automapper anymore. It is right now part of our domain. It's part of our model. And this is okay. And that's basically all. We have just written five lines of code and we have configured basically uh, our own mapping without the need for all the reflection stuff that we might use in Automapper. However, here you might say, hey, but I don't want to have this two product DTO method here because this would imply that the product, which is my domain model, has knowledge about the DTO, which has a totally different concern. And I would say, okay, no problem with that. We can even go to the product DTO and basically create the mapping there. 
And the way this could work is let's go just here to the DTO and let's move it here and let's add this method. So public static in this case, because from a static product DTO from the class, we want to create a new instance of the product DTO by providing the product as an incoming parameter. And what we do there is exactly the same. We map the name from the product name, the description from the product description and the price from the calculation that we do based on the price and the VAT percentage that we have on the product. So you are covered also in this case, you have a mapping and right now, basically you can go to the product detail and just to go to the product and remove this method. And this means that the product will not have any knowledge about the DTO anymore. And the DTO itself, since it's probably part of the application layer or of an API layer or something like that, it is okay that it has knowledge about the domain. So that wouldn't be a problem. Cool. Now that we have set this up and have, we have something to compare AutoMapper with, I would suggest us let's set up some benchmarks here. And here's our benchmark class. Let's go briefly through it. So we have two private fields here. First of all, we have an array of products because in order to kind of like see the performance, we want to do this operation on, uh, well, a larger array of different products because this would simulate how our application would behave if we get, for instance, thousand requests in one second or something like that. So in this case, we have this number of elements property and here we pass in some params for the benchmark. So first off, we'll have 10, then we'll make the test on 100 and then we'll make the same tests or the same benchmarks on 1000. And then we have this global setup where we do uh, initialize, we do the mapper configuration. It's exactly the same mapper configuration that we have seen previously. And then we create the mapper that we use for mapping. And then of course, we populate the products array with some products here. And then what we do, we have two benchmarks. So, uh, first of all, we have with auto mapper, and then we have with direct assignment, which is exactly what we had in this product, like two product DTO. We have used right now for demo purposes, the method to product DTO from our product class. But uh, let's run this application. Let's make sure that we pass it into release because that's what benchmark.net needs. And let's run the application and let's evaluate the results when they are ready. These are the results and benchmark results actually never lie. So if we take a look with AutoMapper, we have these values and without AutoMapper or with direct assignment, we have an outcome that is roughly twice as fast or twice faster than with AutoMapper. Of course, this is not a surprise because as we know, AutoMapper is using reflection under the hood and reflection is very expensive in terms of CPU usage and therefore our direct assignment is of course faster. Now, if we take a look at these results where we have simulated like on an array with thousand products, that's a roughly okay simulation for if you get thousand requests in your application, what would happen? And of course, even in this case, direct assignment, of course, is twice as fast. So it's obvious that if you're using direct assignment and not using AutoMapper, you are also gaining some performance. And that might be important in application hotpads or in parts of the application that handle a lot of requests and need to do a lot of such mappings. But what if I told you that there is even a faster way to achieve exactly the same thing? Well, let's take a look into how we can accomplish this using one of the very nice and very well, underrated, I would say, looking into different code bases, C sharp feature with which are the implicit and the explicit operators. So let me get rid of this and let's start with the implicit operator. Now, if we go to this idea of using an implicit operator, we can simply go, for instance, um, on our product and let's implement this implicit operator. So we have this public static implicit operator. And here we want to return a product DTO and we want to have the product as a source. And this is static because this is actually implemented statically. And as we will see just in a second, we can kind of like directly assign a product to a product DTO and the conversion will be done implicitly uh, by the compiler and it will return us this product DTO. And here we have the exact same logic, like for the name of the product DTO, we map it from the product name, the description, we map it from the product description. And well, for the price, of course, we have our very small calculation here, but in this case, the calculation is in our model. So this is good. It is not in AutoMapper anymore. It is real a logic that we have in our domain model so we can even unit test it very, very easily. And that's actually where the business logic is supposed to be. 
we go to our benchmarks and here we add a new benchmark and we say here it's with implicit operator and this time what we do is we iterate of course through the array of products and for each product we say here simply we want a product DTO so we need to be explicitly that we want this variable to be a product DTO and then we just provide a product. And here is where the implicit operator will kick in because it will look at the product, it will check it if it has this implicit operator that returns a product DTO and yes, it has one. So it uses that operator to automatically transform basically uh, our product to a product DTO. And of course, this is a product DTO. Now, what we should do is of course, we should run the benchmarks again and take a look at what actually is or if this makes any difference at all. So let's run the application and we'll be right back when the benchmarks are finished. These are once again the benchmark results and if we take a look at it we can see that the with implicit operator is a little bit faster than the direct mapping and of course it's way faster than using it with auto mapper. Now, if we look uh, when we did this with uh, 100 products in the collection well it kind of like was still a little bit the same and when we have done with 1000 products in the collection or in the array we see that once again uh, with implicit operator it was a little bit faster but the difference is a little bit negligible I would say but still it is a little bit faster. Now you would argue once again that okay what I have done here is I have actually uh, created here in this product let me go here to the product we have created this static implicit operator that returns a product DTO so once again you might argue that uh, well yes uh, in this case the product does know about the product DTO and this might not be okay and I totally agree with you so let's change that but before we get further I just want to comment out this implicit operator and I want to go back to the product DTO and no problem if we don't want to have this in the product let's add the logic in the product DTO however since what we want to do the mapping we have an instance of the product we cannot use the implicit operator here directly on the product DTO so instead of doing this we just need to implement the explicit operator and once again the explicit operator would return this product DTO and it would have the product as a source now the reason I had to comment out on the product that implicit operator is that when we want to use this operator since both operators the implicit on the product and the explicit on the product DTO kind of like do the exact same mapping the compiler wouldn't know exactly what to use it would be an ambiguous reference so in that case we have commented out that one we have used here this one and it's exactly the same logic that we implement here but right now the product doesn't even need to know anything about the DTO the product DTO. So let's go back to the benchmark and let's maybe just also uh, have here a little bit of refactoring. This would be the explicit operator. And then for each of our product, what we want to do here, we want to get a product DTO. But the way that we kind of like use those explicit operators is by also providing, for instance, or by using a cast here. So we'll cast to product DTO and in this case we can just use here the var keyword and we should be good to go. And if we run the benchmarks again right now it will do the mapping based on the explicit operator that we have provided in the product DTO. Now the result will be very comparable to what we already had so that's why I won't run the benchmarks again but I just wanted to show you this kind of another possibility uh, to also use the explicit operator not only the implicit operator and this gives you flexibility to kind of like choose exactly in the scenarios where you are uh, uh, what or, or which of the operators do you actually want to use cool now this being said actually uh, the conclusion to this one is that okay maybe you should not just give up on using automapper but what it is important on the other hand is to fully understand the extent to which automapper can actually influence the performance of your application and also the different caveats that can occur for instance if you are using automapper as it is mostly used in a lot of code bases like we do a lot of custom mappings even for the properties that we don't need to do mappings because the automapper would kind of like do the mappings automatically as the name implies of course and then also the fact that in a lot of cases we might see scattered business logic in the profile configurations which is totally not okay from a lot of points of views 
And if you want to avoid that, if you want to make sure that your application is more performant than that, then just spend a little bit effort and implement, for instance, a direct mapping or implement the implicit or the explicit operators and you would be covered for most of the scenarios. And don't give me the example that, hey, AutoMapper is doing this faster because if you lose that time to actually write down all the configurations, like the four member calls, it's actually the same time that you would take to, to write an implicit operator or an explicit operator or a direct assignment mapping. So from, from a time consumption perspective, using AutoMapper the way that it is usually used in most of the code bases doesn't really give you anything. And in terms of performance, as you have seen, actually, without AutoMapper, we have way faster performance. This being said, if you enjoyed this video and you think that it might be useful for others, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button on this video, and also share it with your friends on your social network, wherever you think that there might be anybody that would find this content useful, share it and they would be grateful. Also, if you have any questions, don't be shy and hit the comment section of this video and leave me a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you and get a discussion going. This being said, once again, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.